Opus has done it again, but this box is a little bit deceiving. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys, Jason, KM4ACK. Today we're going to take a quick peek at the Opus Exodus 1200. Try saying that three times really fast. All right, so first of all, this thing comes in at just over 23 pounds, so it's a fairly lightweight unit. You can manage it with one hand. Dimension-wise, we're looking at a length of about 14 inches, a width, now I'm not going to count the handle all the way back here. The width of the actual box is eight inches. If you did count the handle, it would be about 10 and a half inches. And then the height on this guy is right about nine inches. And you probably guessed from the name, uh, the Exodus 1200, this is a 1200 watt unit, but that's the part that's a little bit deceiving. Okay, so taking a look at the front of the unit, we've got DC available to us over here. This is all 12 volts at 10 amps. So we've got a power socket or cigarette lighter socket, however you wanna call that. These are 5521 ports, meaning a 5.5 by 2.1 millimeter barrel connector will fit into these. In the center, we've got the nice display that tells us what is powered on at the particular moment, in this case, nothing, tells us how much battery is remaining in the unit. So if I turn on the DC side of this, you'll see that we get car and DC right here. And because I have no watts being drawn out, it gives me a max of 99 hours left on this unit. In the middle right here, we do have all of the controls. So we've got the on off button. This is where, this is the master on and off. This here is where we turn the DC side of uh, the unit on, and this is where we turn the AC side of the unit on. We've got four USB ports, two USB A's that are the QC 3.0, and surprisingly, these USB C ports are rated for 140 watts of power delivery. And that's something that I haven't seen even on the Opus brand. Uh, the other Opus brand units before. This button right here is the IoT button. We'll get back to that in just a second. And finally, over here, we've got three power ports for AC. The only other ports that we've got on the unit are these on this side. This is a solar charge port, or you can plug this up to your car and get some recharging there. Now, it is important to note you can use solar charge and AC charge at the same time. This little port here is just where your AC plug goes in when you want to charge the unit. It does have two different ratings for charge depending on how you set it. It's either low, and I believe that is 300 watts uh, of charge per hour, or high, which would give you 600 watts per hour. All right, so I've mentioned a couple of different times that this unit is deceiving, and what I mean by that is it's rated at 1200 watts, but it has a 1500 watt boost mode. And we're gonna test that out real quick. I know this coffee maker here is going to pull sustained more than 1200 watts while it's brewing a cup of coffee. So let's go ahead and fire that up. We're gonna hear the fan kick on on this unit, and then we're going to see how it performs while it's brewing that cup of coffee and make sure that it will actually sustain this. You can hear the fan has kicked on and you can see that the coffee pot is drawing way over 1200 watts. So we're right, hovering right around 1300 watts on that and it will do that for the duration of that coffee being brewed. So the unit is having zero issues at that 1200 watts and this is why I say it's a little bit deceiving when they rated it at 1200 but it has that 1500 watt boost mode built in. Now, before we wrap this up, I do wanna show you the app that they have available as well. Now, I've been critical of this app in the past because they do require an email to sign up for this. If you just use an alias email, you shouldn't have any trouble with uh, extra spam being delivered to your inbox. That's what I did for this and uh, I haven't gotten any spam because I use that email alias. You can see that I've got the Mega One paired up that uh, I've done a review on in the past, and let's take a look at that Exodus 1200 that we're reviewing today. You can see right up at the top, it will show you how much solar or grid power is coming into the unit. Right in the center of the screen, it gives you the temperature of the unit and the percentage of battery that you have left, and then an estimated 
uh, number of hours left in the current configuration. Right now I don't have anything on or plugged in, so it's given us about 30 hours uh, remaining. I think I do have the AC turned on uh, for it. You can see that right down in the bottom, so if we just click that switch, the AC will turn off and you'll see our hours jump back up. So a pretty good little app if you want to keep uh, more tabs on your device than what you can really see on the front screen. Or maybe you want to locate this somewhere else, be able to Bluetooth to it, and then check everything out from the app. Now, I did not connect mine to Wi-Fi. The only reason you might want to do that is if you want to monitor this from a remote location. That's not something I'm ever going to do, so I didn't bother connecting the Wi-Fi. Now, one other thing I want to mention is the price of this unit. This thing is 50% off for the first 30 days uh, that it's being introduced. So I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. So if you're interested in this, you can check it out. And by the way, the Exodus 600, it's half this size. I believe the base unit of that weighs about nine pounds and they've got a coupon for that as well. I'll leave another link where you can get the X to 600 for just over a hundred bucks. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.